Well, hello again. We have had our one allotted day of sunshine for the month of March. And it is back to clouds and rain again. It just will not stop day after day after day after day. But it's not going to stop me because I'm back in the shop. It's cold out here. But I need to get the one, that one wall of that lower control arm straightened out so I can get the bushing in. I'll show you what I mean. Here is my brilliance. This is the wall right here that is bent downward. And it's closed up. And it's keeping me from getting the bushing all the way through. It's at an angle. Now, it goes down through the top one okay, but it, it hits against the bottom one slightly. It will not go through the bottom hole. So I have to get this wall back up to where it's straight instead of dipping down. And of course I don't have the tools to do that, so I had to come up with some kind of genius idea. <laughs> so I, I took a socket. A, uh, you know, a deep socket, and I put it in the vise, and I've got it clamped against the top. Now, this is the end that's open on the socket. This is the flat end where the extension would go in. And I've got it nice and tight in the uh, vise that I skinned old Johnny U out of, our northern Arkansas Yankee. God, he's such a sucker. <laughs> so, now, and then I took my pickle fork. This is my pickle fork that I use to remove ball joints and stuff. Put a long pipe on it, and here's the idea. The vice is the fulcrum. I'm going to push down on this, and as you can see, it's already causing that top part to flex. Pretty cool, huh? Now, the idea is to flex it and get it bent up enough to where you don't overbend it. Because if I overbend it, then I'm going to have to bang it down or put it in a vice and squeeze it back together. And in the process of doing that, I could screw up this side. <laughs> this is kind of a touchy thing. Uh, but that's the only way I can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and push down on the very end out here. See if I can zoom in. You might be able to watch me break this thing. That would be cool, huh? Come on, focus in here. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to be watching the camera. I'm going to be watching the, uh, the lower control arm. So if I lose you in the camera, don't blame me. Okay, we're going to get it on down. Flex it up a little bit. And I'm going to take this a bit at a time. Okay, that's a whole lot straighter than it was. This is the one that was bent inward like this. So I'm kind of happy with that. And I think, yep, that's going to line up really good with the other side now. How about that? Now I'll have to grease it up. probably have to sand this out a little bit and get this all the way through with a few taps. But... It's designed like that, you know, it's not supposed to flop around in there like that. It's supposed to be kind of snug, and uh, that'd be kind of nice. I'm happy. It looks like uh, we're kind of successful on that, and that little split that was in there actually closed up a little bit too. See it? So I guess we can go ahead and leave that, I hope. I have made a command decision. Uh, I'm not going to live with that split like that. I'm afraid that, you know, this is a very heavy car. And even though the bushing has taken most of the weight, that's still, you know, this is old metal fatigue. This thing could continue to split from there right on out to this edge here. I'm going to take that in. I'm going to have ask Joe the welder to touch that up for me, weld it, and have him weld that also. I'll feel a lot safer with that like that. The next thing we're going to do is put this through the upper control arm. This is that horizontal bar that enables everything to be fastened to the body on the car. And we'll go ahead and put these bushings on each end. You have to put it through the control arm first, and then go ahead and, you know, put your bushings on as, as far as you can go, and then go ahead and torque it on down. I'm going to be mounting this thing with a rag around it, of course, in the vise. Once I get these bushings, you know, hand threaded on as far as they go, it's not gonna be but one or two, one or two threads, enough to hold it, basically. We'll put a rag around this and put it in the vise, and then we'll torque them to 25 foot-pounds. But before I do that, I have to get the paint out of the threads. You know, it's got to come out. Last time, I think I took, I took a wire brush and had to wire brush all that stuff out with lacquer thinner. But this time, I don't have to do that. I have my bench grinder with my little wire wheel, and that's what we're going to be doing. So I'll tell you what, while I'm doing that, why don't you folks watch this? Martin writes, my name is Martin and I'm 21 years old.
I'm from Austria and a big fan of your videos. Well, thank you very much, Martin. I appreciate that. Your videos are especially a big help because in Europe you can't find anyone who has experience with these cars. I first saw a Thunderbird at a local classic car show when I was 14 and I searched for one ever since. At age 18, I finally found one that I could afford and it was located nearby. I bought it without knowing that it had quite a lot of rust under the new paint. You all will see that rust shortly. After I found out, I constantly worked for five weeks, five to six hours every day to get it road legal because in Austria it's very difficult to do that. After that, I had quite a lot of work with differential and motor work. The transmission is damaged too and it's currently under repair. The next step is going to be getting rid of the rust in the trunk area. Yeah, he's got a lot of work ahead of him on that. Yet he says I couldn't be happier with the car and it never let me down since I got it. Please, up, uh, please keep up the great content. Uh Well, how about that? At least we now know we have one Thunderbird friend over in Austria. I thought that was pretty cool. I went through Austria one time on the way to Italy. I was on my way to Rome and we drove right through it. That's a beautiful, beautiful country. Right now I need to get over here and get my my torque wrench because we're going to need it. Uh, keep in mind now for those of you who ever plan on changing these bushings, that socket is a 1 and 7 16 inch, okay? Now the last thing we have to mess with are the little grease fittings that go in here, if I can find them. Here they are. I had a little issue uh, after I installed the upper control arm on the passenger side of the car. I had put these in and I used a washer on one of them, you know, so it would face, face outward this way because when your grease gun, let me see here, let's say this is your grease gun. When you get your grease gun, you want to put it up in there, you want to be able to get to it. But if it's way down like this, you don't have the room to get to it. You can't get up underneath, and you, and you, can't, you can't get onto it if it's up here either. It has to face outward. Well, after I, and I thought I had it all set up right, this one over here, uh, you have a lot of space around it underneath the car, and you can get your, you can get your grease uh, gun up in the top up there too. No problem, you got plenty of swing room either way. But over here, it's up against a piece of metal. Now this may be on the opposite side, it may be over on this side, I can't remember which, but it doesn't matter. One of these is up against a piece of metal and you've got about that much clearance. I'm gonna show you that in a second. And uh, if you don't have this in the right spot, there's no way you can get that grease fitting on there, that, for, on that uh, grease gun. You can't get to it. There's no room to get up in there or nothing. It has to be just right. Now here you can see where I can, I can get the grease gun right on that baby coming out of that bushing, okay? No problem at all, got plenty of room around it. But on the other side, you don't have that kind of room. You've got this stupid thing in the way, and that's how much room you got. Let me get over here where you can see it a little better. Now there's the issue on the other side. And I'm hoping once I get the, you know, you just can't get it, you just can't get the, uh, the grease gun up in there because there's just not enough room. It's just a little tiny area between the wall of the car and uh, the upper control arm. Now I'm hoping once I put the tire on and get this control arm up, uh, it'll give me enough space to slip in under here to get to that fitting. I think, I think that's gonna work, but that's something you have to be aware of. Now on the driver's side, that wall is on the right-hand side of your uh, upper control arm, so you got very little space there, okay? But on the passenger side, it'll be on the left side. I just went over and took a look at it. So this is the one I have to have kind of facing out, and it's not doing too bad so far. 
It's interesting that the other one is not as straight up in the air, although I can get to it. I'd like to have it facing out a little bit this way. I'll show you how we do that. Just get yourself a flat washer and put it on the end of it and then screw it back in. Sometimes you have to use even two of them. And uh, these things are really touchy, I'll tell you, kind of weird. Okay, there we go. Now let's see where it ends up when we tighten it down. You don't have to tighten these things up, you know, like a gorilla. Okay, see, now that's a whole lot better, see? Now it faces this way. All I gotta do is snug it down a little bit, and we'll be good to go. Remember, on the other side, the pasture side, this is one that's wide open, you can get to it. <clears throat> this one over here, uh, it would probably be good to be facing a little bit downward, but as long as it's facing pretty much this way, after the control arm is up, you might have enough space to get in there. If not, I'm just gonna have to diddle with it, I guess. Well, I'll tell you what, the old temperature's beginning to really drop out there, it's starting to get late in the afternoon. So I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and stick this ball joint in the upper control arm. We'll call it a day for today. <clears throat> Hopefully it'll be a little warmer tomorrow. Now in the upper control arm on the other side of the car, putting in the ball joint uh, was kind of tough. It didn't fit very well. It was kind of tight and I had to draw it down with a nut uh, that, on the other side. This time, it just falls right in. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Anyway, what we're going to do is just for now is put this nut on. Now this nut came from the old ball joint. I'm going to put that on there temporarily because I want to use a I want to use a lock washer with this also. And uh, what happened last time is we used the, the nut that came with the ball joint. We torqued it down to the specs and it would not torque. What happened was this is a soft metal. This is the one that came with it. It's soft metal. And it stripped out the inside of the threads on the nut. And I didn't like that at all. So I had to go downtown and get another one. So this, this time I kept the old one, which is a lot harder steel. And I'll draw it down with that after I get the lock washer. Well, that's it for today. We shall see you hopefully tomorrow. Oops, oops, oops. We got one more thing. Uh, these rubber O-rings that go inside these bushings, it makes it impossible for me to get them on this horizontal shaft. I had the same problem on the other side. I don't think they're made to the right dimensions. I mean, you just can't get, you can't get this thing to go on there. So I just took them out just like I did before. You know, and it, and it gives a place for the, the grease. When you put the grease in, you got to have a way to, for air to escape. And this thing here would not allow that to happen. So I don't know. I don't get why they're even in there. But anyway, if you want to use them, go ahead. If you can get them on, more power to you. I spent the last 45 minutes or so putting a, a coat of clear enamel. A light coat, nothing heavy. I didn't want to clog up the threads on the bolts. Just covering everything and then rolling them around after they've dried and then coating them again and just, you know, fixing it up so things didn't get rusty. Uh, I don't know how long it'll be before I can actually get them in there. And with the wet weather we've had, <laughs> it doesn't take 10 seconds to start things rusting. And uh, also one of our good subscribers told us, said, you know, he sent me a comment in the last, in, in the last video. He said, hey, uh, you're using grade 5 bolts to put the, those... Uh, calipers uh, on with you should use grade 8 which is hardened steel he's right he's right that was a very good point and I'm glad he brought it up so I went downtown I traded in the uh, the two grade fives I had and I bought all new hardened steel bolts grade 8 for the calipers good job my friend all right let's get back out in the garage this morning I spent about 40 minutes downtown dodging the coronavirus everywhere I went but I held my breath the entire time I was there for the whole 40 minutes to keep from, you know, breathing in any germs. So just to be make sure I made it back so I could show you folks these things. I needed some nuts and bolts and washers and a couple other things I'll show you before the video ends. And uh, I came back and I was able to get our ball joint in because I needed that lock washer. It uh, didn't have it. I don't think it calls for a lock washer, but I wanted a lock washer on it anyway. So we went ahead and put that in. I'll, I'll torque down. I'll torque it down once it, uh, the upper control arm is back on the car. She looks a lot better with that ball joint in there. Well, as hoped, my good old buddy Joe the welder came through again. Uh, here was where the little, you know, little hairline crack was. He filled that in. And here's where the larger split was. 
So I think it's in pretty good shape right now. This is nice and straight. Let me see. Yeah, it's pretty straight. And everything's filled out. I told him don't worry about grinding. I would go ahead and grind out the weld on the inside. I'm going to leave these the way they are. The one thing I like about old Joe the welder is he's a neat welder. He, you know, look at that. That's a nice little bead on the inside there. As it turns out, this bushing will still fit down through there. How about that? Even with that little bump there. But I'm going to take it down a little bit, just a tad. I want to kind of smooth it and make it a little flatter. I'm not going to take it down to, to this part here. Just knock it off just a tad. Well, once again, it's getting a little chilly out here and uh, temperature's really dropping. However, tomorrow the temperature is going to be seven. It's supposed to be 75 degrees. Oh, I let's hope it gets that way, okay? So what I'm going to do is just show you what we're going to be doing tomorrow. I wanted to get more done today. I got some done, but uh, what we have here is our, of course, our inner and outer tie rod ends with our adjustment sleeve. This is the new inner and outer tie rod ends with the adjustment sleeve. You have to loosen up these bolts here first. Uh, they're pretty tight to keep these clamps on the on the sleeve until you know it gets until it gets to the customer. <clears throat> After that, if he wants to lose the bolt sleeves, uh, the clamps, and everything, that's up to him. <laughs> anyway, all we're going to do, I clean these up on the wire brush on the on the bench grinder, both sides. I'm going to count how many threads are on each side. And, I'm going to, and there's only one, really one way to do that. You just can't sit there and you get cross eyes on some of them counting. Take your knife, blade, or something sharp or something narrow, and just start from here and, and start counting outward as you go. You can hear it click. Oop, can start again. That's what happens. Sometimes the, the things are so smooth it slips right out of the slot. But you go back and do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, there's twelve, and then it goes into the rise right here. So what we'll do, see if I got a ballpoint pen. We will write down twelve over here, because I'll forget tomorrow morning. <laughs> I don't want to have to play the video back. Let's see how many we got over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the rise. So this is seven over here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the new tie rod ends and screw them into the sleeves and with that many threads exposed. That's the only way you can do it to get it as close as you can to the way it was when it came out of the car. And even then it's not going to be right. And I'll tell you because we put new ball joints in uh, we put new bushings in, we put new, uh, uh, you know, uh, sway bar links in, stuff like a new shock in, and these things are not, these things are not, this car has never been aligned, as far as I can tell. So it's going to be off, and we may have to wind up going back under there and, you know, loosening them up and adjusting them this way and that, because uh, I did that one time in a car, I set it up exactly like this on a uh, Ford, uh, Bronco I think it was, or something, anyway. And the, uh, when I tried to drive the car downtown after I put the new tie rod ends in, uh, the tire scruffed and squalled, you know, and I had to turn around and come back and loosen this up and try it back and forth. And I had to take it out two or three test drives until I could get the car to stop scuff scruffing and, and, and squalling to where I could get it downtown to get it aligned. So we may have to wind up doing that with the Thunderbird when the time comes. So we will pick this up in the morning when it's a little bit warmer, I hope. Well, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm all energized, had a good night's sleep. And uh, there's two things I want to accomplish this morning. We want to get this together. These are half inch bolts, by the way, or about half inch bolt and half inch nut. We're gonna go ahead and put this together. But first I want to take a little grease and slide down in, you know, not much. I want to put a film of grease on the threads down inside here. And I uh, also want to put just a light coating on the threads here. Uh, if you look at the other one, you'll see that the, uh, uh, the shaft is down to about right here on both sides. They meet pretty much in the middle right here. So I'm going to have to use my pinky to get down in there a little bit on both sides. So let's go, say what, I'll just go ahead and take my little pinky right there and get a little grease on it. I don't want to put a ton of it in there. Just to put a little bit here and a little bit here. 
the rest I'll stick down in here as far as I can go on both sides. Then I'll smooth it around and we'll start threading it in there. Remember now we have to have seven, uh, 12 threads showing on one side and seven on the other. I never would have remembered that had I not written it down. I'd have had to recount the whole thing over. Well, why don't you write it on a piece of paper? I don't know. I was kind of hoping I didn't have to do that, but this sleeve, just like others I've had in the past, you know, you've got a space, and uh, the sleeve is just a, it's closed a little too tight, and uh, what I'm going to have to do is put it in the vise with a rag around it, and you know, don't, don't squash this thing, you know, you just want to be able to hold it well enough to, so you can take your hand and thread this thing in. It's not easy, you've got paint on these threads, you've got paint on the inside there, even though I put a little bit of grease on there, it's not really helping. It is helping, but not like it should. And then we're going to have to do the same thing to the other side. Just be careful with these things now. If you ruin one, the sleeve, don't worry about it. Just take one off the old one and clean it up, paint it, and use it. But if possible, I mean, you know, I paid good money for that thing. I certainly want to use it <laughs> if I can. And a lot of times you'll see that these, uh, these mechanics... When they align your car, they can't turn this thing because it's really frozen in there. They'll loosen up these two nuts, and they can't turn it. So what they have to do is, or at least they think they have to do, is they have to put vice grips on it, you know, like so, to turn it. And you'll go underneath your car, and you'll find vice grip teeth marks in that. I, I, that bugs me. I don't like that at all. But, you know, by the time you get the car out and going down the road and take a look at it and everything, it's a little late, but... Some of them, boy, they just butcher these things up with their vice grips. That's the difference between a good mechanic and a crappy mechanic. Now, once you get it in, you know, about at least half the distance you need, it should start going in fairly easy, okay? If it doesn't, you want to be careful. This, you know, it's screwing in nice and easy now by hand. But boy, up until this point, it's been a struggle. You know, it depend, depends on how much paint's in the threads of the... Uh, tie rod in how much paint is down in the sleeve so it goes pretty easy now okay now I'm gonna to have to do the same thing as the other end now if you're if you're doing this on any car it doesn't matter if you you know if it's a Thunderbird if it's a Chevy I don't care what it is and you're you're putting new tie rod ends in the sleeve and you need to use a vise don't put it in the vise like this because with, with the slot up because when you tighten up the vise you're going to be squeezing that slot even tighter and it's even going to be more difficult to get the shaft from the tie rod end down in there turn it around so this here either faces the front jaw or the rear jaw now when it comes time to put the other one in the other end remember it does not screw in to the right okay it, it's a reverse thread on the other end. It'll only go in if you screw it into the left. One goes into the right, one goes into the left. And this one's going in nice and easy on this end. All right, I pretty much got it, but let's take a look at this uh, one more time. Turns out that the short one is 12 threads and the long one is seven. So I had it backwards, but that's why I wrote it down and that's why I double checked. So, no big deal, but, you know, you have to stay aware of that. Well, that's it. They're both set up, 12 and 12 and 7 and 7. But I'm all, I'm, all I'm going to do is snug down these sleeve bolts. I'm not going to tighten them up a lot. Once I get it on the car, I've got it pretty much in the same position that the other one was in. Now, these are a little bit different design. You'll notice that this has got a, it's a little longer, actually, because of this. And then you notice how they're kind of short and stubby here. This is pretty much the same, but it's it's just a it's a lot longer actually. It's about my God, it's about an inch longer. <clears throat> but that's okay. This is what the sleeve is for to pick up any slack, uh, or make it longer or shorter when they uh, when they line the car. And I, like I told you in a previous video, I've already checked with a guy downtown. He said if you can bring me the uh, alignment specs, we have guys here that grew up and know all about these 60 models cars and. They can go ahead and do it for you, and it'll probably run me about ten thousand dollars. But that's okay, you know. I'll do whatever I have to do. I'll just go see old sixty-four goat. He's, he, that guy's got so much money. I wish he would just get off that fat wallet once in a while. Anyway, I'm going to go in and get something to eat. I'm kind of hungry right now, and uh, when I when you when I come out, the next segment you'll see that both of these are now done. Uh, this one here will be our next victim, and it is the passenger side. And I will also put some tape 
on the sleeve of the new one so I know which one goes where. And we're just going to replicate here what we did with this. By the way, the reason I'm not tightening these bolts down, that we have it set, I'm just going to snug them down, you know, kind of keep this from turning and this from turning without a little effort. Because, you know, once I get this back on the car, it, it may require these things here, maybe need to move a little bit this way or a little bit that way. This one may have to go, you know, a little bit this way, a little bit that way. And once I get it in a position where it's, I'm comfortable with it, then I'll go ahead and tighten them down. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, everything's done. This little booger right here about wore my arm out. It just it almost didn't. All it almost didn't want to go in, <laughs> but it bent to my will. I would not take no for an answer. The only thing we have left to do is put the grease fittings in. Now the grease fittings go in the hole on the end of this tie rod end, and they go in the top of this tie rod end. Now this is where a lot of people screw up. They'll work and work and work and get everything done right. And then they'll put these things in wrong and snap them off or get them in there at an angle. You know, you've got to make sure, you know, this is where the de the uh, devil's in the details, you know. Take your time getting these uh, things in. Get the right size wrench. Don't use a pair of pliers. Take your time and do it right. Putting a little bit of grease on it and down in the hole that you're putting it in will be helpful. And keep these cotter pins because you're going to need them when you... Uh, put your nuts back on and get them tor torqued down, you're going to need them to put through the hole in the shaft, okay? They come with the tie rod ends. Final item on these uh, tie rod ends, when you put these fittings in, don't think that you have to put the fitting all the way down until it's flush with the, uh, with the tie rod, with the ball. This is, just, this is as far as they're going to go. It, does, it gets real tight when you start. I took uh, the wrench, I snugged them up really good without breaking them off. That's as far as we're going to get on that. And uh, they're both the same way. By the way, these fittings are seven millimeters. Don't ask me why. Now the other side, they went down nice and flush. See, well, that would be nice if I had both ends like that. But I'm not going to take the chance of breaking these things off because then I got a real problem on my hands. Those are really tight. Not really tight, but you know, good and tight without breaking them off and they'll last a long time. Well, it is time for a coffee break. What do you say when we come back out, we put our idler arm back together? All right, that's better. Now, we're going to have to do, when we put together the, uh, the idler arm, it actually involves two sets of torques. One is the torque of the bracket to the car once we get it done. Each of the bolts that go through these holes are torqued 20 to 30 foot-pounds. Now I'll probably go ahead and torque those to 30 foot-pounds. I've got uh, lock washers to put on this time. They came without lock washers. They came with a, uh, it's kind of a, it's a thick washer and it's kind of concaved. And when you draw it down, it, it pulls the center of the washer down and it becomes its own lock washer. Not bad, but they're old, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna leave those washers on but I'm also going to put a new set of washers on it as well, which I already have. Okay, so the mounting bracket bolts to the car are 20 to 30 foot-pounds. The second set of torques is the steering idler arm bushing assembly. The steering idler arm bushing assembly, which is this thing right here. This is your steering idler arm, and this is your bushing assembly right here, okay? It says steering... Idler arm bushing assembly to the idler arm mounting bracket, which is this baby. So what they're saying is once we run this thing through the bushing assembly, and we put this, first we put the washer back on, and we put the nut on, we have to torque it to, what is the torque, what is the torque? The torque is, dun -dun 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 -dun, 60 to 80 foot-pounds. I'll probably do this one 70, right in the middle. All right, I'll tell you what, before I get totally clean, I think I better put a little bit of grease down here on this thing. Not much, just, just a little, just to help it, okay? Because that thing is bound to be turning back and forth. 
I think I'll put a little bit on this here too. I don't know if that's rubber or what that is. Not usually a good idea to put this on rubber, but that rubber is pretty hard, so we shall see. I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to have a nice big giant bolt holding it on anyway. Okay, here we go. I'm going to slide this baby down in there. Or a nice big nut rather than how to bolt. Then we go ahead and put this on. You'll notice it's got two flat sides, so it only goes on one way, like so. Then we take our nut. Now this takes a one and one eighth inch uh, socket. And I don't have a one and one eighth inch socket. So what do we do about that? Well, I've got a 30 uh, millimeter. Now I don't intend really to tighten this thing. I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can tighten this thing up. I, I don't want to put this these ears on this uh, bracket against anything and, and torque this thing up to 70 foot pounds. I'd rather wait until it's on the car and then this these things are held in place by those three bolts and then torque it from the bottom down there. So I think that's what we're going to do and I'll have to use a 30 millimeter to do it if I can find the, uh, the hole that lines up here. Well let me see what I can do about that. Alright she looks a whole lot better than she did. Now I did not tighten this up like I said I ran the uh, I ran the cotter pin through there and I don't want to lose that cotter pin so I'm going to go ahead and take this and just kind of tighten it up so the cotter pin doesn't move. Okay now the cotter pin will be there when I need it. I'll just pull it out, torque it and uh, that'll be it. Let's set it aside and go to the last item I had planned to do in this video. I'll tell you what I was going to go ahead and put this whole thing together and install it into the car on the driver's side but I decided to add a heck with it. You know this video is getting pretty long so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just take the shock and install it onto what they call the clevis bracket. I don't know where they got that name from but that's what they call it. The whole job only includes four things plus the shock. One, two, three, four. And then the shock. So the first thing I got to do is take this. This is a grade 8 bolt of course. I have to take this out run this into the center between those two tabs and then run the bolt through and you know if you go to the shop manual it just says you know put it down here tighten it up you're done well that's not quite true you know the, the the manual didn't quite cover it the way it should or there has been a change in the shocks but i don't think so i had a terrible terrible time getting the uh, former shock off of this bracket because i had to cut through the, the nut with uh, my, my uh, cutting tool. I heated it with the torch. I did everything. And finally we were able to split it apart with a chisel and get it out of there. And this time we we're putting a, a different, whole different nut in there. And I couldn't understand why it was so tight because it was exactly the same tightness on the uh, pad, on the driver's side. Well I found out why. The, look, Take a look at the serrations on this shock. Okay. Now they don't talk about these in the shop manual. They talk about them with the instructions that comes with the shocks. And here's what it says. Important. Torque extra tight so that the serrations at the ends of the sleeve dig into the bracket. So these serrations on both sides have to dig into this bracket here and this bracket over here. And once you get it, you know, you want it straight up as much as you can get it. The shock will turn on the... Uh, on the bushing here once it digs into the metal on both sides so there's no real specified torque value anywhere it just says torque it tighten it down As a matter of fact there's nothing in the shop manual says just put it together and tighten it up anyway that yeah, you just tighten it down until you're pretty sure that these things dig in like they're supposed to and I have to install this rubber uh, this is called a, a bumper what do they call this thing I want to get this right this is called a compression bumper it goes underneath like so I showed you this earlier and then you bend over the tabs once they come through you want to get those tabs hammered over uh, I'll be bang, I'll be tapping it from the other side to make sure that it's up as far as it's going to go then I'm going to turn around I'm going to tap these things over and the purpose of that is when the shock comes up sometimes it'll hit it'll hit this here instead of hitting the metal okay you want to hit this rubber thing and then of course once it's in this thing uh, goes on the top and uh, this rod of course will go all the way up through the whole thing and this this rod will go all the way up through the bottom until 
it, it hits it'll hit the bottom of this uh, thick washer that's on you can't see it here but I showed it to you in a, or a much earlier video there's a thick heavy washer right under here and this ridge around this shock will hit against that thing and that'll stop it from going all the way through and then you go ahead and put your nut and that's what holds it on now how the whole thing works like that is beyond me I haven't been able to figure it out yet <laughs> But anyway, we're going to go ahead and install it that way. And uh, they said, you know, use soapy water to get it up through the rubber parts and everything. I think I'm going to try silicon grease first. And if that doesn't work, then we'll go ahead and go with the soapy water bit. Right now, let's get these tabs bent over. I'm just going to hold it down and take my ball peen hammer. And I'm going to hammer each one away. And that's all they say to do, just hammer them down. But I want to make sure they're f that this thing is flat up against there as it'll go. You don't want any... You want these tabs up as high as you can get them. And if you miss the tab and hit the thing a couple of times and booger up the paint, so what? So what? It's your car. Just get the paint out and spray it again. <laughs> well, let me get started on that. I decided to do this on the, uh, on the hard wood of the workbench rather than the towel. It gives me something a little more solid to bang on. And I'm not sure I want to use the ball peen after all. That's a, that's a pretty, I may use a smaller hammer for that. Well, that job is done. It's nice and tight the way you want it. You want it all the way down as far as it'll go. Now, I've got the shock into the clevis bracket. I'm getting ready to tighten it on down until those teeth, those serrations, dig into the to these uh, tabs, whatever you want to call them. Well, there she is, all tightened up, standing tall and straight. I like that. Those teeth are really, they have really bit into the side here. And, uh, this was done using my claw hammer. Couldn't use the ball peen, just wasn't enough room in there to get to. I could have used it after I got them bent over, but I figured, what the heck, just keep banging. So I did. And uh, this will be going on top of it when we get ready to mount it in the car, which we will. And uh, that'll be our next chore. Uh, next time, we'll get this thing for sure into the car. That'll, we'll start out the next video with that. And there's also one other thing. We still have the uh, coil spring to work on. It needs to be cleaned, de-rusted, you know, the uh, rust reformer put on it and get it spray painted, looking real pretty. So until next time, this is John. Well, as usual, there's one more thing I wanted to cover and I forgot. This is our lower control arm. It has now been painted with the, uh, I put the gray primer on and painted it with the, uh, the enamel uh, primer and, and uh, paint. And, you know, right there, right where our Wherever our splits were, they're all gone, so we're, we're in pretty good shape there. The only thing to do now is to finish the underside. I want to put uh, a nice coat of paint on the underside, but this is done. 